Welcome to week eight, part B. It's time for text. And to quote an old Stephen King advertising slogan, words are his power. Now, I'm a big fan of text. Uh, you might have noticed, it's all over the place. It's all over the site. I like assignments. I like people writing things. I love the text-based forums of Waffle. I set up a Padlet so I could have more text options for you. And I'm asking you to create a reflective portfolio, which is text. Text and other things, but it's text. So functionally, the other thing about image and text is that it is going to feed in text elements feed into the whole of the subject. But because we're so there's such common usage and they're in such common practice, this is about stepping back and saying, What's a marketer's application for this approach? Now, one of the things as well, when we talk about the forums, and the forums being text-based and text-oriented, we run a, a walled garden, a closed network environment. At the end of the 15th or 16th week of the operation of the subject, Effectively, that forum is over. Uh, there is a point at which you then get disconnected from your old subject and you can't log back in and you can't reaccess these areas. However, on the bigger, wider, broader internet, there are forums that have been running for a long time. And it's mathematically possible for people who I grew up with on the internet and who I went through forums with for their children to find out the conversations I have had with their parents. Specifically, one of my closest friends from the internet, their son is now an apprentice chef and has a driver's license and basically is roughly the same age as some of the people in this subject some of the bulletin boards we were on when we were your age still exist and are still out there. But thankfully, I wasn't using my full real identity at that point in time. Now, the biggest thing about the internet to understand is that absolutely everything is text. Functionally, if we're being completely meta recursive about it, binary is text, everything is text. I am not entirely convinced I am not actually just a series of ones and zeros someday. But effectively, because everything is text and code runs the internet, there's a point at which everything is made of text. And that's why we need to step back and focus and say, what does it do for us as marketers? And it turns out, uh, flashback to 1999 and the matrix that the matrix code that you can see uh, in glorious technicolor lime on the screen is in fact a sushi recipe or several sushi recipes so welcome to the matrix it's text everything is text and i'd just like to say that as much as i love this movie and i absolutely adore the franchise this makes no sense. This is not why the code would... No, anyway, we're going to move on because I can go for hours about whilst I love it and it's visually amazing, that's not how you'd render a 3D world in text. And the robots are supposed to be better than me at this. Anyway, text and the internet. A couple of things to consider. Facebook, full of text. Twitter, absolutely built on text. Wikipedia, heavily text. Blogs, text. Forums, text. Email, text. Text, text. The existence of Microsoft Word and Google Documents, text. And people have got, boomers have got the nerve to claim we don't read anymore. These PowerPoints, text. So we want to talk about a couple of different bits and pieces of text software. Obviously, the, a portable text reader, something like the Amazon Kindle, or a portable the Adobe Portable Document Format. These are your sort of player readers. They're not perfect, but they're okay. 
Now, the text of Broadcaster is where we get into some interesting things. A whole genre of massive multiplayer video, massive multiplayer text games exists. And this is the multi-user dungeon. Uh, when I was doing my PhD, one of the early possible topics I was going to research was massive, were these massive multiplayer uh, multi-user dungeon servers. So at the moment, there's a new iteration of it, which is the AI, uh, Markov, tra Markov Chain Driven Dungeons. Uh, so the live interactive role-playing experiences using machine learning and scripted responses so that as more people play, the game gets a broader sense of what can be done or what you can do. It's not artificial intelligence. Machine learning is not artificial intelligence. It's not like having Matt Mercer, but in software form, sitting there going, so how do you want to do this? It is a series of Excel spreadsheets occasionally second-guessing you. Which is, it's getting there, but it's not artificial intelligence. But the key to it is that it's got a very strong co-creation element because text is a co-creation tool. You read it, you immerse it, you bring it into your mind, you create the visual images associated with it mentally, and you incorporate it into the schemas of knowledge you already have. Massively co-created. Uh, the other software to make a note of, we're all familiar with Word and Notepad and Notepad++ and Google Docs. I'd like to introduce you to the UpGoa 5. XKCD, again, had a challenge where they were using the, trying to explain things using the 10 hundred most used words. The UpGoa 5 text editor is an implementation of this. So your challenge for this week is to explain your e-marketing project using UpGoa 5 and the UpGoa 5 text editor. So give it a go, see how it goes, see if you can actually propose a value proposition in common words only. Now, to step back from all this, let's throw a bunch of different options at you. Let's think about what the value proposition of text is for your project. Now, chances are you've had text embedded in the project, but you may not necessarily have consciously thought about it as a value proposition, as a standalone value concept. If you're running TikTok, you've had captions and hashtags and titles. Instagram, caption, Twitter, Twitter, the 100, 144 characters, 288 characters, the content, the meme is the message. eBay, product descriptions, Depop, product descriptions, Tumblr, text posts. Most of the time, YouTube, title, hashtag, descriptors. Most of the time, there is some form of text-based accompaniment to your core product value, if it's not, in fact, the core product value. But if it's not been your core value, what you want to be able to do is to step back and say, for the audience that I have and the audience that I'm reaching with the platform that I'm using, is there a text-based offer I could make? Is there a value offering in text that would be useful? I have bet on this heavily throughout the course. I have written instruction manuals. I've created Word documents. Every week there's been some form of Word-based, text-based interactive event in the live learning. I wrote the big book of things to do with the internet. Lots of words because I wanted to value, I wanted to provide you with a value proposition leading into the ETA. You in turn created for me the e-technology analysis. The value proposition there was the pitch proposal of your project. So consciously step back and think where can I use text and what can I create of value with the text? Now let's get in here and start doing the marketing mix on it. Uh, most of the time, most words that you will encounter on the internet will be free. Email, it'll be out there. Uh, all the stuff, well, 
all the stuff that you haven't paid a cash payment for, free text. It's free real estate. Now, way back in promotion, I mentioned that there was an area of product placement that I think hasn't been fully maximized and hasn't been used to create value for the reader. And this is product placement in the written word. Now I know product placement take, happens in music. I know it happens in video, video games, in movies, in TV. Where we haven't fully embraced it and embraced its possibilities have been books, short stories, novels, fanfics, and drabbles. Now, a drabble is a hundred words, no more, no less, a hundred words of fiction. But you could take the fiction platform, take the written word platform, and have add sponsored components, to have product placement, to have sponsorship. You could write an essay, and we call this advertorial if it's done in terms of the advertiser writes the content that is passed off as editorial content, editorial copy. But if we went the other way around and wrote content for which we would benefit our readers by having product placement or sponsorship of these words. That's a value proposition that hasn't been maxed out. It hasn't really even been explored because it's going to take some thinking, it's going to take some complexity, but I think that in the age of the hypertext and the hyperlink and the Amazon referral link, you have some really good opportunities, particularly around the platforms that your Amazon Kindle can follow links. So give it a thought. Uh, other ways you can bring price into play uh, is basically paper read. This is the paywalls on just about the more credible the news outlet is, the more likely it is to hide behind a paywall, so you have to pay money for it. The more conspiracy theory driven dr drivel, rubbish and garbage, the more likely it is to be freely available and easy to read and easy to access and far higher up on the Google SEO charts. We may be doing society wrong. Next up are uh, recurrent paywall options, but also recurrent sponsorships. Now, I mentioned Medium here because you can buy uh, a Medium subscription, which allows you near unlimited access to content on the Medium site. But also think about things like Patreon and subscriber-based newsletters. These are ways in which you can have monetization attached to words so people pay for what they read. Obviously, you know, things like buying books, but because of the existence of the physical world library, we don't really have a Spotify for media, Spotify for the written word. Uh, the non-financial price considerations. This is one of the few times I've broken it out by different categories because there was a bunch of things I could say. Words take time. Now, I'm one of the faster, faster writers in the business. My standing speed record is 110,000 words in 62 days, uh, a double NaNoWriMo for my marketing strategy text. However, words take time. That we have a book that was written by SMS. Uh, however many characters the SMS is, it's not as many. That It's a hell of a platform to have used. Uh, so, hats off to have written it under conditions he was stuck in and under the platform he had available to him. On the non-financial side, uh, the fact that like an SMS novel exists, so basically it's a two-way street here. You can write a novel over SMS if you're sending it directly to your editor, and you can have a novel sent to you by text. In terms of effort, there's a lot of mixed uh, pricing around the non-financial elements of effort. You think about this subject alone, 
We have the forums, which can be medium to low effort. We have, and or have very high effort. We have the Padlet, which is a weekly wrap-up, short pieces of summary of what's taken place. We have the assignments, which are very heavy effort. And we have the reflective portfolio, which can be extraordinary heavy effort or really easy, depending on the market fit and the product market fit that you find with reflective tasks. We can balance in some learning curve. Um, Duolingo comes to mind as a place where text is difficult, challenging, or refreshing and reinforcing. In terms of the non-financial price, one of the biggest things into uh, reading versus writing, so presumption versus consumption, but always leaving kudos for your thick author is low effort, high energy. You feel so much better about it when, life when you've done that. It's a good way to generate good karma and please always leave a kudos for your thick author. Toss a coin to your witcher, leave a comment and a thumbs up for a thick writer. Now, the other thing, lifestyle, words fit into most people's lifestyle. Uh, there's a certain genre of people who pride themselves on not reading and not being into words, but they also tend to send SMSs and text and post on Facebook. So words happen. Most, almost everyone's into it. And finally, risks. Okay. I can tell you now that every time I've linked to an article, a book, a text, every time I throw a hyperlink in the subject to a text-based opportunity, it's functional risk is very high up on my list, as is social risk. Thankfully, I'm very, very risk, uh, risk seeking in certain areas when it comes to uh, social risk. Distribution, I'm just gonna focus on this particular operation to here now. The text on this, slit, on this slide, on this screen, here and now, is digital and tangible. The slides that you can download to go with today's lecture, those are digital tangible. If you were to then print this, those slides out, you would have convertible and tangible. If I was to then bundle up all of the slides in this whole operation and sell it as a bound copy, transportable and tangible and linking you to something to be used as an example is the mediated intangible. Every assignment reading in this course sits around mediated intangible because it's about the use of the idea. So we're going to go the effective not exhaustive case study route to close up uh, text. It's kind of interesting. Text is easier to talk about uh, but faster to talk about. I just want to mention a couple of different uh, sites. Quora. Now, Quora is a value in use platform. It exists because people ask questions and people like me provide answers. This, that's its core value proposition, is it's a place for me to provide text-based answers to other people's questions. So it's kind of interesting that front. I, write things on Quora on a regular basis. Uh, I try and stay mostly hinged, but I do also love going uh, slightly off the deep end in terms of use of metaphor, florid and colourful language. So your mileage may vary in terms of how well you like my writing style on Quora. But also when you read that, you start to get, a, you look at my other subjects and go, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's consistent. Next place I want to give a shout out to is Archive of Our Own. Fan fiction is an amazing, amazing co-creation space. And Archive of Our Own is one of the most important things to have happened on the internet ever. It is a volunteer-run community. It hosts transformative work, fan fiction work, and it's got a legal strike team that makes Disney back off. 
and Disney will kill anything that it chooses to kill because it's the basilisk of the damn internet. If Disney stares at you, you are gone. Except your archive of our own who rolls up the sleeves and says, Medusa me this, sunshine. They saved transformative works on the internet by being able to show that a fan fiction, a fan created not for profit, not to be exploited, not to be uh, all the different ways in which you could go wrong, but they showed a very strong legal reason and legal rationale that under the existing prohibitively controlling copyright laws, you could write fan fiction. And it was a hell of a fight, and they won. So memes exist because Archive of Our Own bought us the breathing space to be able to create transformative works. You take a screen cap of somebody else's work and put a slap a couple of labels on it, you are technically illegal under copyright, you're technically breaking a bunch of laws and subject to financial penalties and potentially even criminal infringement because copyright law is stupid and broken but archive of our own said no nah, it's transformative and work back off so we've got some of the things that we can do as marketers as artists and as creators exist still legally in a moral in a gray legal area heavily patrolled and protected by archive of our own ao3 is freaking awesome and io the existence of this subject to AO3 because without them and the firepower they put into play for transformative works I wouldn't be able to create the transformative work that is the e-marketing subject because functionally this is an academic fan fiction because I take existing marketing theory and I apply it into alternate universes so everything I do on e-marketing where I take a, say, a services marketing framework is an alternate universe. It's an AU. Uh, and I can do this work because there is precedent that exists to allow me to adapt transformative and creative work. Now, I've mentioned when I did the 110, 110k words in 62 days, the double nano remo. Now the nano remo itself is 50,000 words of a fiction novel, creative novel, in 30 days. And I'm just saying that nano remo starts in November. There is a companion version of it which we lovingly refer to as May as well. Surprisingly held in May. But it's a 30-day challenge in which you write 50,000 words and it's designed to get you to enjoy writing fiction and to just get out there and go you know what it doesn't matter what the story turns out to be it matters that I produced something so it's the ultimate conducer prosumer creator event people have gone on with their nano novels and gone on to actually have them published or turned into other works but that's not functionally the purpose the purpose is conduction. You're going to create a novel, a novel that you want to have exist. And just saying, starts, you're finished up your portfolio and plenty of time to get in and slap out a nano uh, package there and just get yourself a novel. There are some other novel writing events uh, and things like 24 hour comic book day and three day uh, novel weekend. So if you did want to do a transformative work within the boundaries of the subject and you wanted to write a book within the boundaries of this course, you got time. Now one of the things I do love, by the way, with the internet is that every now and then somebody reinvents the newsletter. We have a number of platforms. MailChimp is the one I usually use, but there are systems like Button Down where it's subscription-based newsletters. It's functionally a zine for... It's a zine that's delivered via Microsoft Outlook. It's, it's great because newsletters are amazing things. And again, in terms of something that you could 
look into as a value addition, a text-based value addition of your ongoing projects is if you've got a subscriber base, you've, you've got an audience base, this is another way to reach to them to provide them something of value. Now, I run a newsletter for the LEGO Series Play community and one of the things I do in our monthly update is I have a recurrent section where I provide ob items and objects. So I talk about you know, LEGO Series Play as a reading, if there's been anything academic written about it, if there's been uh, something in the trade press about it, what's the you know, an image of the month, a model of the month, a little you know, how to put your Lego together in a certain way using one of our toolkits. Create value for your readers. And now what we've got is we've got a range of options that allow for paid uh, Patreon supported or uh, Button Down does direct payments. So people can choose a newsletter subscription level. They can buy the free version or they can buy the more expensive version. So effectively you're creating a tiny little direct market magazine. It's awesome. This is what zines, this is the future that zines, the digitalized zine is about and embrace it, get on it and do it and subscribe to the things that you're interested in and just embrace it. It's a really, really amazingly powerful news new development in an old school, old technology. All right, let's close it up with a little theory and application. Let's talk shop about what another reader's object. So you've been co-creating with text throughout the semester by reading these PDF files, by reading these journal articles I've been providing. And I wanted to do a shout out to Cora and I wanted to mention that this is a really interesting idea that talks about the value proposition that is provided through social leadership in a text-based forum. And really it talks about the whole notion that altruistic behavior and knowledge sharing, so an intrinsic value and an externalized behavior are the fundamental co-creation elements, the fundamental value proposition that is enabled through leading a forum in Quora. So if you are interested in understanding content leadership, why someone would volunteer their time to someone else's platform to create value for a third party, this paper is going to explain it to you. Why you might use this, you might use this to explain your own activities where you've been contributing to a community or you've been participating in ongoing communal events or you've been leading and creating these events. These could within our own subject. If you've been one of the lead strikers, if you've been one of the content creators on the Waddle Forum, if you've been one of the people to go early on the Padlet, if you've been driving and leading the community within the subject, this could be used as a rationale inside something like your ePortfolio. So give it a read, have a look, see where you can apply it. And as always, you can reach me via text on the social medias, by sending me text over an email, by booking through our text-based contact form. And with that, see you next week.